Are you involved in TARC or do you have a rocket that separates into two parts and the bottom part comes down separately and you want to find out how fast this is coming down or where it's going to land in your simulation program like RockSim? That's what I'm going to cover in today's video. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan. Every time TARC has a competition where the rocket is required to come down in two separate parts, we get a lot of questions about RockSim and how to set this up in RockSim. And specifically, they want to know where the booster comes down and how long it takes to come down uh, and where it's going to land. Uh, the other thing they want to know is how come the simulations in RockSim don't show the rocket that looks like this. That's what I want to cover in this video, but I can't do it live. I've got to do it on the computer. So I'm going to go into the computer room, uh, which is my office, and I'm going to finish this video and then I'll come back here after the, it's done. So I'll be right with you in just a second. This is the rocket that we wish to turn into a model that comes down in two separate pieces. I want to split it right here behind the transition. We'll start by changing it from a single stage rocket to a two stage rocket. So this is done on the rocket design attributes tab. So we'll just select two stage rocket. Um, let's look at it in, in just 2D. So I'm going to split it right here. We go to the rocket design components and we select all the parts after the split line and that will be this rear body tube. Anything associated with this is going to go into the booster stage. So basically that's our technique. We're going to trick Roxim into thinking that this is actually a two-stage rocket so that two parts come down. So I'm going to go to the, the edit menu and cut this rear booster tube. And it's going to ask me, do I really want to uh, delete this component? And I'll say yes. And it deletes it, but it's still in the memory of the computer. So now I'll select the booster stage, and then I'll go to File, Paste, and it pastes it back in. Now right now we're not seeing it because we're only looking at a single stage. So if I select two stage from this drop-down menu, all of a sudden my components reappear. Now you see two parachutes in the back end of this rocket. Now this front parachute I want to associate with the front part of this rocket. So if I go back to a single stage, it doesn't have a parachute. So right now it's still in the bottom. So I need to move this top parachute up into the top. So I'm going to again go to cut from the edit menu. I'm going to say yes, we're going to cut it. And then I'm going to paste it somewhere into this top uh, part of the rocket. And I'll just select this payload tube. So edit, and then paste. And see, now you'll see it here. And if we go back to two-stage rocket, it's no longer in the bottom. But I want to move it back to the bottom so that its mass is in the right spot for the simulation. So I'll go to the payload tube, find my parachute, double click on it to edit it and now I want to move the location so let me go here to the side view so you can see it so right now it's right here make this uh, show both stages so I can see where I want to move it so I want to move it from here to here so I'll just go to the location slider and just slide it backwards eventually I'm going to get to the end of the slider and I can't go any further with the slider but I can still type a number so I'm going to type in uh, a larger number and you can see that it did move back and it's still not in a quite right spot so I'm going to make my number a little bit bigger and you have to play around with that to get it into the right spot so at this point I like where that parachute is it's, a, it's about where it was originally and I can say OK and it will accept the change now if I go back to single stage rocket you can see the parachute is associated with this upper part so at this point, we're ready to run a simulation. So I'm going to go here for prepare for launch. 
like I normally do, and I'm going to get this pop-up saying, since we have a two-stage rocket, because it thinks it's a two-stage rocket, I need to assign motor mounts for each of the stages. So right now this top part doesn't have a motor in it, but Roxim wants us to assign a motor mount tube, and I'm just going to select this larger tube. So I'll say yes at this dialog, and it's going to bring up this screen showing me all the tubes. And here is my payload body tube, which is this one right here. So I'll just check that, and now it thinks it can load a motor in there. And so it brings up the simulation property screen, and it's showing me this tube that it thinks it's a motor mount tube. But I'm not going to load a motor in it. I'm just going to completely ignore it. We're only going to load a motor in this bottom engine tube. So I'm going to choose an engine. And this is a... Oops, it thinks it's... Oh, cancel out of that. Somehow I, I selected the wrong engine. <laughs> I want this one. Make sure it's selected, and it's a 24mm engine mount. So I'll choose engine. Um, and now I'm going to select an engine. It doesn't really matter for this simulation. I'll just choose an E15. Uh, I'm going to select a delay, and then click OK, which is down here. And it's loaded the engine in there. And it, if you look on the side view, you, you can see that the engine is in place, which is good. Now, since now with, to run the simulation, we have to trick Roxim, and then we're going to do that with the flight events tab. So under the flight events, it's showing us two parachutes. We have the top parachute and the sustainer. And the sustainer is always the top part of the rocket that coasts upwards. And then we have the booster section, which is the bottom part that has the engine. So if it's a two-stage rocket, you have a booster and then the sustainer. So on the booster, we'll change that one first. And we want to select... Um, deploy the parachute at stage separation. So this red parachute right here will be deployed as soon as the booster drops away, which is what we want. But at the same time, we want the sustainer's parachute to deploy at time after ignition. And that's what you need to select. And the time after ignition is right here, and right now it's set to zero seconds after ignition of the upper stage. Since there's no motor in here, um, there's really not an ignition, but Roxim thinks there's a, an ignition. The ignition always occurs when the booster stage fires its ejection charge. And right now, I think we selected an engine with a seven second delay. So at seven seconds, this is going to drop away and fire the ejection charge, and then it's going to think that the top stage has ignited. Uh, under simulation controls, just leave that alone. Starting state, um, you can launch at whatever launch angle and launch guide length you want. And I also have a five mile, an hour, five mile per hour custom wind speed selected. And then I'll click on flight profile and we'll see the launch. And you can see the rocket down here. And we can run the simulation. Rocket takes off. These arrows, that red arrow is a thrust arrow. These, these green dots are one second apart. The rocket's arcing over. And then it pops out both parachutes. And there's a red one and a green one. The, the, the red dots are associated with the booster. And the uh, blue one is associated with the sustainer. Now, in this next part, I want to show you how to change this image so it looks like your rocket. So I'm going to pause here, and I'll be right back. To make our image look like the rocket that we designed, go down here to the Preferences button and click on that. And then on this screen right here, we want to click on the Rocket Image tab. Um, give the file a name. Um, right now I just called it the Tark Rocket. Um, but when you name this, one thing you have to remember, there can't be any spaces in the name. So I have a space here between Tark and Rocket. So I'm going to take out the space and just put in a, a hyphen so that there's no spaces in there. 
under image file path you can choose anywhere you want to store these images. Basically what we're going to be making are little images, little cartoon like images that are called sprites that will be in the um, that will make it look like it's our rocket. Um, and we can put these anywhere we want. Right now I'm going to choose a path. I'm just going to throw them on my desktop. So here's my desktop and I'm going to create a new folder called sprites. And I'll say create. And now we're in that folder and I'll just click choose and that's where it's going to be stored. Now these files are associated with your particular design. So if you ever move this file folder it will lose the images and it will just revert back to this one right here which is okay. Um, so just remember that. Um, and now we're, it's asking us what image width and height to make um, and these are the defaults is 156 which is a little bit bigger than this rocket down here and the image angle step size is um, by default it's 10 and I I've made it down to 5 and that's at every angle the rocket is um, gener the image is generated and you'll see it as I click in generate rocket image data and see this is the it's creating an image every five degrees around the circumference of a circle here and it's going to go through this procedure for all the different configurations of the rocket that Roxim thinks it might have so just give it a, give it a couple minutes uh, to generate these and then when you're done um, just click on the OK button okay and then we'll just click OK and now it reloads the image and now we have an image of our rocket it does look a lot more like our rocket and then we can run the simulation and again it will run it just as it did before the rocket coasts upwards and then now you'll see it break into two separate pieces and they're falling together um, they both have blue parachutes because um, I didn't change the colors in the uh, of the parachutes when I created the parachutes the, uh, the 3d color was set at blue even though in 2d it was a different color now we'll go ahead and hit cancel and I want to show you one other thing and that is the graphs of the rocket and make sure you have your simulation highlighted and then click on the plot graph button and this gives us all the parameters that we can plot and right now I'm plotting um, on the x-axis of time. Then we have the rocket velocity, its altitude and range. And I've also selected the booster's range. And that is from down here at the bottom. You'll notice there's booster one and booster two. Um, since this is a single stage booster, um, it's actually not called booster one. RockSim thinks it's booster two. If it was a three stage rocket, the lower booster would be booster one. This one is booster two, and then you have the sustainer, which are all these other parameters above. Uh, these are associated with the sustainer. So anything above booster two is, is associated with the sustainer of the rocket. Since I'm interested in the, uh, um, the second, uh, the booster stage, uh, I want to plot its uh, velocity. So I'll change that to booster two velocity. Um, and I can change the color here, and I can make an orange. Click OK. Um, so now the, the booster's velocity will be orange. And I click plot graph, and this is the orange one here on the side that I'm interested in. And while the two stages are together, the, 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 rain, um, the velocity of the booster and the velocity of the rocket itself should be identical, which they are. They're, they're overlapping. Uh, once they separate, we see that the booster stage is um, at a lower velocity which means it's falling slower than the upper stage and I can get that velocity right here by by looking on the graph um, if I extend this over um, it's about um, 15 miles per hour which is okay so again look at this graph um, and you can select different parameters to see um, of your booster stage Another question you might have is how do you put in the uh, conformal rail guides into the software? Um, now these 
are put in as launch lugs. Uh, the software doesn't have uh, rail guides or rail buttons. So just use a regular launch lug to simulate these in the software. And you can't go wrong because you will have to go and modify your simulations later. If you're designing a rocket for TARC, I really recommend the Pika Flight newsletter number 385, which walks through the steps in designing a rocket. Basically, you have to go back and do it as a process where you're going to fly the rocket, get some data back, and then go back into the software and tweak your design. And that's the right way to do it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you learned a lot about RockSim and about setting up oddball situations. Um, if you like this video, please come to our website and let us know. Um, over here off to the side, we have some other videos that uh, you may enjoy. Again, my name is Tim Van Milligan, and this is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true. Mm -hmm.